Hello and welcome. Today we will solve the n queens problem using a super simple and surprisingly effective algorithm. You will see by example how a few simple changes can drastically improve the running time of an algorithm. For each improvement we make, we will solve larger instances of the problem with more queens. In the end, we will use a clever trick to make the algorithm even faster and find out how large an instance we can solve. Let's get started. What is the n-queen's problem? In chess, the queen can move any number of squares vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. The goal in the n-queen's problem is to place n queens on an n by n chessboard such that no queens can attack each other. In this case, we have a standard 8x8 chessboard, so we have to place 8 queens. What you see here is actually a solution to the 8 queens problem because no queens can attack each other. In this video, we will attempt to solve the n queens problem using a local search or hill climbing algorithm. I will demonstrate the algorithm with an example of the 4 queens problem. We start by generating an initial state, which we will then try to improve. For each row, we place a queen in a random column like this. Then we figure out how many pairs of queens can attack each other. We call this the number of conflicts. In this state, there are three conflicts. The algorithm will try every way of moving a single queen to a different column. Each move results in a new state, as you can see here. This state, for example, is obtained by moving the queen in the top row to the leftmost column. And this one is the result of moving the queen in the bottom row to the rightmost column. Note that there is always exactly one queen in each row. The algorithm counts the number of conflicts for each of these states and then picks the state with fewest conflicts. In this example, the best state is this one because it only has a single conflict. If there were multiple states tied for the fewest number of conflicts, the algorithm would pick randomly between them. That was one step of the algorithm. Now we try to improve the new state in the exact same way and repeat until we hopefully find one with zero conflicts. In our example, we can reach this solution state by moving the top queen one column to the left. As you can see, this algorithm is super simple, but it's not always as easy as it appeared in my example. The problem is that there is no guarantee that a state can be improved by moving one queen. Consider this state for example, which has one conflict. There is no way to move a single queen that results in a state with fewer conflicts. The best move produces a state which still has one conflict, so the algorithm will pick that one. In my implementation, I allow up to 100 non-improving moves, but after that we consider the algorithm to be stuck. If that happens, it starts from scratch by generating a new random state. Let's see the algorithm in action. We start by solving the 8 queens problem. I have made this program, which tracks the progress of the algorithm. When I start the algorithm in a second, you will see a plot with the conflicts on the y-axis and the steps on the x-axis. You can also see the number of conflicts, the current step, and the time spent here in the upper right corner. Ok, here we go. That was super fast. From the plot, we can see that it was easy to reduce the conflicts in the beginning, but towards the end we had some non-improving steps before we found a state with zero conflicts. Let's check the solution. Awesome. Let's try with 25 queens. That was also easy. How about 100 queens? The algorithm is significantly slower now, but we are still able to find a solution. Now the squares are pretty small, so I will change to this theme instead. I think it makes it slightly easier to see what's going on. 
Now we will try with 250 queens. The algorithm is actually running. Unfortunately, it is so slow that we don't even have two data points yet. So there is no line. Oh, now we can see a little bit of progress. But let's try to make it faster. Here is how it works in the current version of the program. Initially, we set the number of conflicts to zero. For each queen, we check if there is another queen in the same column or one of the diagonals. We don't have to check the row because there is always exactly one queen per row. Whenever we encounter another queen, we increase the number of conflicts. The top queen is involved in two conflicts. This queen is involved in one and so on. The conflicts variable is equal to 8, but there are only 4 conflicts in total. We get twice the actual number of conflicts, because every conflict is counted twice, once from each queen. So, in the end, we have to divide by 2. How fast is this conflict counting? There are n queens, and for each of them, we check big O of n squares. So, in the current version of the program, conflict counting takes big O of n squared time. We can do better than that. With the exception of the initial state, a new state is generated by moving a single queen from one column to another. In this example, we have moved this queen two columns to the left. The state on the left has six conflicts, and we will use that information to count the conflicts for the state on the right. The number of conflicts will be the same, except that we have to subtract some conflicts that disappear, and add some new conflicts that arise. Before moving the queen, it was involved in two conflicts, which will now disappear. In the new position, the queen is involved in one conflict, which is new. So, the conflicts in the new state is 6, minus the two conflicts that disappear, plus the one new conflict, for a total of 5 conflicts. This way of counting conflicts only takes big O of n time. Now what happens when we try to solve the 250 queens problem? It is much faster. We don't need anywhere near the same amount of patience. Let's check the solution it has found. The queens are now very small, but I promise you they are all there. We can zoom in to see a few of them. Fantastic! Can we also solve the 500 queens problem? With some patience we can. Let me speed up the video for you. Before we try with more queens, let's improve conflict counting even more. Here is the trick. If we store how many queens there are in each column and in each diagonal, and we keep track of that from state to state, then we can quickly find out how many conflicts a given queen is involved in. So, we do exactly like before, but Instead of checking each square along the column and the left and right diagonal, we can simply look up how many queens there are in constant time. Let's look at an example. How many conflicts is this queen involved in? We look up the number of queens in the column, which is 2, including the queen itself. So, it must be involved in one conflict in this column. Next, we look up the number of queens in this diagonal. It is 1. So, there are no conflicts here. In the other diagonal, there are two queens. So, we add an additional conflict for a total of two conflicts. With this change, our conflict counting now takes constant time. Here is the 500 queens problem again, before and after this change. 
Look how fast it is now. Let's try to solve the thousand queens problem. The only thing we have changed is the way we count conflicts. I think it's amazing how much faster the algorithm is with the small changes we have made. There is one last trick I promised to show you in the beginning of this video. This trick is a change to the algorithm itself. Now we will try the moves in random order. And if a move results in a state with fewer conflicts, then we pick it immediately. So instead of trying all moves and picking the best one, we will settle for any improving move. The hope is that we can avoid a lot of work while still making good progress. Here is the 1000 queens problem again, before and after this change. So much better. It was extremely fast in the beginning, because it didn't have to try many moves to find one which reduced the conflicts. Let's try the 10,000 queens problem. It's easy to see that the speed decreases over time. The majority of the time is spent resolving the last few conflicts. Let me speed up this last part for you. The squares are now so small that you cannot even see the queens after they are placed. Showing the solution became quite laggy with this many queens. The zoom was not so smooth, but we can see this one queen on the huge chessboard. I also attempted the 100,000 queens problem, but as you can see here, it was going to take a long time, especially considering that the algorithm slows down over time. Perhaps in the future, we will revisit this problem and see if we can do even better. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about this style of videos in the comments. If you found it interesting, then consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel.